I'd like to call the uh, first public hearing to order. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? His Honor the Mayor. Here. Councilor McBrady. Councilor DeMassey. Here. Councilor Hill. Here. Councilor Wilmot. Here. Councilor Gosick. Here. Councilor Casario. Here. Councilor Cordino. Here. All present. The first public hearing is for uh, proposed local law number one of the year 2018. It's a local law amending chapter 211 uh, involving the clearing of streets and signposts. There's one person signed up to speak, uh, and I would ask that you step up to the microphone, state your name and address, and try to keep your comments to five minutes or less. The first person signed up is Cindy Snyder. My name is Cindy Snyder, and I live in the seventh ward in the city of Oswego. I just wanted to make a few more comments about the um, local law number one, about the shoveling of the sidewalks, et cetera. Um, when I first saw this come out, I um, sent an email to my alderman with my comments, and he suggested that I come to the Common Council meeting and express my comments that I made to him. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Um, I grew up in this city, and um, I was a walker when I was a kid. So this problem's been ongoing for decades because sidewalks weren't shoveled when I was a child also and I walked from the forks of the road up to St. Mary's for nine years back and forth and I remember going from one side of the road to the other and sometimes climbing snow banks that were two or three feet high and seeing little foot paths of kids boots making a path down where the sidewalk was underneath but people hadn't shoveled their uh, sidewalks so this isn't anything new um, I would just, in looking at this local law, I would just like you to consider um, the population of older and elderly um, homeowners that are still living in their houses. Um, these are people who probably are physically incapable of shoveling, no matter how much time you give them till 7.30 the next morning or whatever. And they're also probably financially incapable of finding someone and paying someone else to shovel their sidewalk at the going rate these days is usually about $20 a pop. Um, I think these are the types of people that need to be considered in making a mandate that people have to shovel their sidewalks. And also, um, there are areas in the city that have streets that don't have sidewalks. I live in the seventh ward in the area where I live. There are no sidewalks. So when my kids were growing up, they went out the door in the morning and they had to walk in the road up around the corner to where the bus stop picked them up. So there are children, no matter even if you enact this new regulation, that are still going to have to walk in the road to either catch the bus or they're going to have to walk in the road because there's simply no sidewalks. And that's true in several areas of the city, not just in the Seventh Ward. There are places where there are no sidewalks. Um, um, the other thing um, I'd like to talk about is the enforcement of this law because I don't think it's very um, cost effective or time efficient to have a member that's an employee of the code enforcement department driving around to see if somebody hasn't shoveled their places where people haven't shoveled their sidewalks in residential areas. Um, I don't think that's a viable option. So therefore, how's this law going to be enforced other than people calling in complaints because somebody didn't shovel their sidewalk. And when that happens, um, it's frequently a case of a subjective um, enforcement. Um, there might be a, a lot of people that didn't shovel that day, but because somebody called in a complaint on a certain person, somebody from code enforcement will come out and check it out and write them up or whatever. So. Um, I just think that this needs to be carefully considered and I think the reach is possibly um, painting too wide of a um, you know, reach with your paintbrush um, because like I said this has been a problem for decades and you might be getting people that are not your target um, in your attempt to get people that are simply too lazy to shovel their sidewalks or they own rental property and they don't have anybody shovel the sidewalks at their rental properties. That's all. Thank you. Uh, no 
everyone else has signed up to speak, would anyone in the audience like to speak to uh, local law number one? Yeah. Eva? Eva Corradino, 7th Ward. I would just like clarification of something. My understanding was that the 7 o'clock in the morning business was for after the snowfall had stopped, it would be the next day, 7. So if it snows for four days on the fifth day at 7 o'clock in the morning. But as it's written, it doesn't say that. It says 7 a.m. of every day that any snow, slush, or ice may be upon the same. So since it's not in what's written, it sounds to me like it would be enforced every single day. So I'd just like you to consider perhaps tweaking yeah. the word. So uh, I can address this when we get to the resolution, but the quick answer is uh, if it's snowing at 12.01 you know, on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. you're not going to be expected to shovel the sidewalk at 7 a.m. It makes sense to me. It's just that the way it's written, while you're here, while Tom's here, while your code enforcement is here, they know what you want. But 10 years from now, it says 7 o'clock every morning. That's just... All right, well, I can make sure when we discuss it, it's on the record. But that's okay. clarified. Thank you. I didn't realize there was three sheets. I only signed one, sorry. Um, my name is Bill Meyer. I live at 173 West Albany Street. Um, since we're talking about the snow removal, I guess my biggest problem is a lot of our citizens in, in this city, probably half, are either retired or they're elderly, they can't afford a lot. And even if they have a contractor to, to plow them out or snow blow, whatever, a contractor can only do so many places at one time. I mean, they can't. You know, if they, if they start out at 6 in the morning, they can only hit so many places. By 7 o'clock, it would be impossible if they have 10 or 12 contracts. That's the first thing. Um, the other thing is, if, it's, if it stops snowing at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, is that when you expect everything to be cleared up by 7 o'clock the next morning? Because I'm retired. I'm not getting out at 9 o'clock at night in my snowblower and snow blowing in the driveway or the sidewalk for 7 o'clock in the morning. The other problem is I've got neighbors that work shift work. So if it does stop snowing at 7 or 8 o'clock and I wait until 5 or 6 in the morning to, to snow blow and I wake them up, I got a real feeling that these guys aren't going to be too happy with me when they're going to work the next day because they got woken up at, after two or three hours sleep. I said, these are all things that need to be considered when we're doing these laws. The other thing is, again, enforcement. We don't enforce the zoning that we have now unless it's complaint-based. And I think that's wrong. Because the reason I think it's wrong is if we're calling it a law, I don't get a ticket for driving down Bridge Street 40 miles an hour because somebody complained about it. I get the ticket because it's the law. If you guys are going to put this stuff on the books, then enforce it. But don't expect to deputize the whole city of Oswego to enforce your laws. You've got seven or eight people up here and you're making laws and then you expect 15,000 to enforce it. That's not right. If you're going to make a law, enforce it. If it's not enforceable, and believe me, I could go, I could stand up here for 20 minutes telling you about some of the crazy laws you guys got in the zoning. But I'm not going to because I'll do that individually if you guys got any questions. However, I also when I talked to the last mayor, the previous mayor, Mr. Gillen, he said that they were going to review all the zoning. When I, from information I've gotten through the grapevine, you guys are reviewing all the zoning, but it's from an outside source. It's from someone that's outside the city. It's a contractor or whatever. Why don't we have four or five people from each ward, different ages, different, uh, different incomes, on and on, to, to discuss what the zoning, what the city needs, not what somebody else thinks the city needs but what the, the constituents really want to see the city and where we want it to see it go. I mean, we're the people that, that have a feeling on where we'd like to see the city travel. And through zoning, I, I mean, I get all the zoning laws that we have, but some of them are just ridiculous. They're unenforceable. And I, I just think that a committee, when you guys talk about zoning, 
Think about having a committee of four or five people from each ward. Get them together. Let them look at the zoning laws that are on the books and see, you know, see where we can go with that. But anyway, getting back to the sidewalks, think about what, what we're doing when you, when you say 7 o'clock in the morning. If it snows that hard, chances are the school is going to be on a two-hour delay anyway. So that gives the kids an extra two hours. So 9 o'clock, I think, is a fair time to have people, to expect people to get up and clear the sidewalks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else like to speak? Bruce. Just a else on local law number one. Seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn this local law for this public hearing. Councillor Hill, Councillor Gozer, or please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Thank you. Uh, that will close the public hearing for local law number one. I'd like to open the public hearing for proposed local law number two uh, of the year 2018, a local law amending chapter 249, vacant and occupied property maintenance. His Honor the Mayor, Here. Councillor McBrady, Councillor DeMassey, Councillor Hill, Here. Councillor Wilmot, Here. Councillor Gosick, Here. Councillor Tesserio, Here. Councillor Cordino, Here. all present. There's nobody signed up to speak. Would anybody in the audience like to speak to public hearing number two, local law number two? Uh, this local law is for uh, nuisance violations, tall grass, garbage in the front lawn. Um, on the books right now, we've got, there's a zoning law that says <coughs> uh, if your grass is over, I think it's either eight or 12 inches, and I can't remember the exact measurement, but again, right next to my property, it's like the woods. I mean, it's like I'm living in the country. It's a 13 by, it's 113 by 140 lot. It's all grown up. Grass grows up like crazy in the summer. The city comes by and they cut four feet in from the curb or whatever it is. So it, I don't know for what, but they do it. And the, not, nothing's ever been done about it. There's been complaints. Nothing's ever been done. Again, we're making laws and we're expecting the citizens to enforce them. If you're going to make a law on a vacant property, enforce the things. But don't bother because it's just not worth it. I mean, you're, 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 all, all you do is you start neighborhood wars because this guy gets mad at this guy, so now he's got a zoning infraction, so he, okay, so he complains about it. The guy gets in trouble. Three blocks down, the same infractions there, but because the guy's great with his neighbors, nothing happens. You know, it's, it's really not the way to do things. And if you're going to do vacant property, then make the people clean it up. Because I pay a high amount of tax on a garage in the city, almost $2,000 a year, and I live next to this mess, and nobody wants, I mean, if I wanted to live next to that, I could pay a lot less taxes and have a lot more land in the country. But it's in the city, and it's supposed to be kept nice. But it's not. And we've already got something there that says if your grass is over 12 inches or 8 inches, whatever it is, you, then you'll, something will happen. Nothing's happened. So now you're going to make another law saying the same thing. Then is this one going to be enforced by the city? Not by the residents, but by the city. I hope so. Thanks. Would anyone else like to speak to uh, this local law? Seeing none. I will take a motion to adjourn. Councillor DeMassey, Councillor Tesserario, will clerk please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. So I will close that public session, or uh, that uh, public hearing, and will now open uh, public session. And again, I ask the same rules apply. Step up to the microphone. Uh, state your name and address and keep your comments under five minutes and you can talk about uh, about any topic. I don't have
have the list, I assume. Does anyone sign up? I have one person signed up. That's Bill. Have you, did you speak, or is there another issue you want to uh, speak besides the two? I'm at a zoning thing. Believe me, you, 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 this is 42 years of questions, confusion, and frustration. So one of the zoning laws you've got on the books right now is pickup trucks. I own an F-150. My next door neighbor has an F-250. Now, if he had an F-350, which is a one-ton truck, and he makes me mad, and he doesn't have a garage, I come down to the city and complain. According to your zoning laws, he's got to get rid of the truck. What's he do with it? Where's it go? That's one of your zoning laws. Look it up. One ton or bigger. And you gotta you gotta have it in the garage. If it's not in the garage, you gotta it's gotta go. And the other thing too is I can take you somewhere right now where there's a whole lot of stuff. And I got I got I, when I when I first moved into my house that I'm in now, there was a vacant lot across the street. And I parked it, not knowing that we had vacant lot ordinances. In order for me to park in that vacant lot, I had to come down and get a vacant lot permit, which cost $150. And you have to have a site plan where every car is going to be parked. Are you kidding me? I wasn't starting a parking lot. I had a truck and a trailer. But I got this long letter from the city where I could take you around to probably 50 other places, they didn't get no letter. Again, it's complaint-based. It's not fair. If you're going to make a law, make it for everybody. If, everybody, if somebody's violate, I had the lady from the, parking, from the parking thing come around one day. I had one tire on the grass, and this is going to seem absurd, and you're not, probably not going to believe me. I had one tire in the grass, and she stopped and told me how to move my truck because I had one tire in the grass. Are you serious? I said to her. I said, there's two people that got four or five trucks in the grass, and you're telling me I got one tire in there and I got to move my truck? I mean, things are just ridiculous. And you guys really need to get a handle on the zoning thing. Honest to God. Because it's way out of hand. So, I mean, that's my, I mean, like I say, I can, I can give you more and more, but. I, I'm sure if you guys look in the zoning and read the zoning laws that you have on the books right now, you'll find that some of it's ridiculous. In order for me to, be, you want things done and you want property made nicer. I mean, my, my, the property that my garage is on right now used to be a grown-up piece of property. Now it's all landscaped. It's, it looks good. But before I could even get a permit to build my garage, I had to come down and get a $150 vacant lot permit before I could start anything. I mean, you're just causing things that uh, you're, you're making people spend money that they don't have. And some of the other things is if you put a garage on a house, or if you put a garage on a piece of property that doesn't have a house, you can't call it a garage. It's a miscellaneous storage facility. Well, then when you guys send the letters out, say, oh, so-and-so wants to build a miscellaneous storage facility, now people think you're going to build something like that's up on Erie Street where uh, it's got four or five different garages where people come and store their stuff. But if I put that garage, if I put that building on, a, on property with a house, it's too big to be a miscellaneous storage facility. Now it's, it's got to be called a garage. So when I built my garage, I didn't realize all this confusion was going on with terminology. So I, I made the plans for my garage. The only problem is when you call it a miscellaneous storage facility, all the setbacks are different. So it cost me another $225 in variances that I didn't plan on spending. So that's $375 I spent for what? To try to make the property look better? And drive by the garage, drive by the property, you'll see it. But these are the things that need to be changed. And, need, and that's why you guys need a committee of people that have had experiences with zoning to try to help you out, to try to make it better. Thanks.
Anyone else uh, like to speak during public session? Well, I'd like to have the attention that Mr. Myers is getting, but we seem to have none. Um, I'd like to talk about the traffic issue at Kingsford Park, which I'm sure you're aware of and maybe other people in here are aware of. Uh, basically, it's kind of out of control. Um, as you know, I've been sending emails to Mr. Gozik and yourself, and you kind of see what's going on with the kids running out in front of traffic, somebody's going to get killed, uh, something needs to be done. And, uh, kind of at a, at a loss, other than they're going to be changing the, uh, the signs, but we were informed that even if they change the signs, they can't enforce it, or they were told to, or told not to, I'm sorry. And uh, from what we heard, it kind of came from you. So I'd like to know, basically, why were they informed not to do anything, and why are the children, you know, the safety really not being a, a high priority? Yeah, so I... Uh Usually we let the public speak and then... Uh, well, you do whatever you got to do, whatever you do. I'm no, this, this is a short one. Okay. So I saw the uh, letter circulating social media. There certainly was no directive for me to not ticket people. It's just not true. That and came from your police force. Well, the police force is going to be at the traffic meeting next month, and we'll see what they say. Okay, then. okay. So, uh, and... You know, the issue is we're, we're aware. I was counselor of the world ward, and I've uh, discussed this with Counselor Gozik. Uh, you know, we know there's an issue. The problem with tackling this issue is if people obeyed you know, the signs that are there now, there would be no issue. And the signs there now specifically say uh, load up and drop off zone, which means you pull up, you let your kid out to right. walk into the school. What's happening is apparently uh, students or uh, parents pull up, they walk their kid into school, up to the classroom, say hi to the teacher, walk out, say hi to the parents, get in, and they're sitting there for longer than a, quote, drop-off, mm -hmm. load-up zone, which if you want to walk your kid into school, go ahead. I understand that, but you should park in a parking spot somewhere and walk the kid in, not the drop-off and load-up well, We up all zone. agree with you, definitely. Right, and, and I'm just... And that's what's making it a little hard to tackle from our end because the signage and the policy there now is should be correct. Uh, now, if I... Uh, there should be a time I, limit on the drop-off. Really. And that's one thing we're looking at. So we're working on it. We're, we've also scoped up a uh, proposed parking lot uh, or load-up zone behind the school. Obviously, that's going to cost uh, money that we just can't pull out of the air overnight, mm -hmm. uh, but we've explored that option, and we also need to talk to the school district and, and talk about uh, where and how they park their buses and traffic flow around. So we're uh, aware of it. It has to go before the traffic committee um, to be considered, to consider any proposal and hear any ideas. Uh, Isn't that what we did the other day? What? With all the traffic committee? Thursday night, um, John had um, asked if we put it on the agenda. So some people out here tonight, I know the crossing guard, Lori's here and other neighbors um, came and um, they addressed the issue uh, for discussion on the front of Kingsford Park. And, um, I didn't know if I was I didn't know if it was or not, but they came down Thursday night and um, after the meeting, um, Keith, um, Keith Kostros, the uh, FBI training, and um, the people asked what they could do and they said, well, you could come and speak at public session. And Right, yeah, no, we, we, I think we already got the signs addressed that we need to be taken care of, but the main thing that we need to enforce, I mean, just the other day, uh, somebody parked on the wrong side of the road and let their kid out, and their kid ran in front of the road while there was an officer sitting behind them with their lights on and nothing was done. I mean, nothing against the police force. I mean, I don't, I don't want you to think I'm, you know, badgering the police force in any way. But, I mean, to have something like that, and then that car sat there, and I had to go out and stop traffic so my neighbor could leave to go to work. And it, it's really getting out of control. I mean, somebody will be killed, and if it's a kid, God, you know, God forbid, I, I'll be the first one next to that parent saying, this has already been addressed. You know, I, I just want to let, you know, at least it's on record, everybody knows. Right? 
Thursday, and again, it was just last Thursday, so I mean, it was only a few days ago, but um, we've, two and a half years ago, I was at traffic on Lois Terminella, neighbor on Niagara Street. We changed the signage there from no parking to no standing because of a technicality. People could actually pull up and um, be in the car and stay there, so they changed it, and now... And she said nothing really, and, you know, nothing's changed. And Keith Kostrowski the other night, had, um, if I'm correct, had indicated that they're going to change the signage um, again on 5th Street so that from Varick to um, no Niagara so that there traffic. I, I, I don't know how quick the turnaround is because we asked, I, wanted, I asked and said, can we make sure the mayor gets to hear um, the tape of it? And I know Chief D is out of town, so there was only um, a couple of us. Yeah. He wasn't there, but that's my understanding of where it was left Thursday night. And, yeah, um, but it's I'm, gonna, I'm just going to Joe Schmoe homeowner. It's you a more talk to a crossing guard. Who no, it's a, it's a problem. We, and I agree with you. And all I'm saying is the traffic flow isn't the issue because the signage should be conducive to traffic flow. There's and traffic committee, when we go to the traffic committee and discuss it, uh, we can try some things that are going to try to fix it. But there's going to be need to be a more serious long-term solution than work in traffic. Right. Because if everybody paid attention to the signage, we wouldn't have a problem now. The problem exactly. is they're not paying attention. You know, I, I don't particularly like Fifth Street being clogged and children being in danger, so I can assure you that I have, n I have not told Okay. The police department did right. not enforce because I live in the neighborhood. I was counsel of the ward. I'm aware of the problems, and I don't like it. Uh, if you know uh, which police officer said that I said that, I'm not give me the name. Name, after name out there, man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, not at all. That's usually how it works. Good but, try, though. But uh, you know the not at all. There, the police chief usually chairs the traffic meeting, and I can assure you that. When he's chairing the committee again, it'll probably be a little more organized, and uh, he will know that I that directive didn't come to my office. I don't know where it came from. Uh, so, anyway. Okay. Uh, Councilor Gozik and I, we've, we've talked. Uh, we're going to talk to the police chief, talk to traffic when they get back. We will do whatever we can to address this through the traffic committee in terms of traffic flow. You know, my answer to you tonight is it's, there's, it's going to take a much more serious more expensive and time-consuming solution to truly solve the problem. That's what we want to do, and that's what I'm interested in doing. But we're going to have to work out some stuff with the school district, and it's, it's going to take a little time, but we'll do some stuff to try to mitigate it. Uh, yeah, it's the only elementary school on an artery road going from, like, here to almost Fulton, yeah. so it's, it's very dangerous through there. Plus, you have, you know, people flying through there at, like, 50, 60 miles an hour, yeah. and nobody cares. I mean, I would invite anybody to come and hang out at my house and watch the mess that goes on every morning. And it, it, it's absurd. It's really crazy. But thank you for your time. Yep, we'll get it. And if you, uh, you know, keep sending pictures. I'm probably going to your spam by now, so. Oh, you're, <laughs> I get them. And I can only do so much. Nope, just keep sending them and keep us up to date if you see different situations or whatever. You just got to keep us, uh, the more information we have, the better. You, know, you saw the one this morning. I mean, somebody pulled in my driveway, parked their car, locked their doors, got out, went into the school, and they were there for like 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what yeah. the heck is going on here? I know. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Yep. School system. We'll work on it. We'll, we'll put a, uh, maybe a timer on it and try some different things. So. Yeah, All right. Well, whatever. Just thanks. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else like to speak during public session? Miles. Now it's up by me. I would just like to comment on the Saturday parade from the Hibernians. This is 38 years ago when Bob Chetney used to have his little Irish hour up there at the Hibernians on Sundays for about an hour on WSGO. And John Sullivan was right behind him. They had a Polish hour up there. They had an Italian hour up there. This Hibernians is making a comeback right now. And I think this shows you how much commitment to the community this comes from a club like that. If we can promote more of this stuff, it'll make them feel better about the community. Because I've driven through worse communities than this. I can remember back in 1968, I drove through Saigon, a lot worse than this community would ever be. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Okay. Anyone else uh, like to speak during public session? Hi, my name is Valerie Donstar, and I currently sit on the Oswego Tree Advisory Board to the Mayor. 
as well as I'm a volunteer Oswego tree steward. And what I wanted to <coughs> speak about was the tree ordinance. We have a tree ordinance on the books, and I just wanted to bring, make sure everybody was up to date on that, and you should, all the counselors should have gotten a copy of that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, the particular point I wanted to address in that is the removal of healthy trees. Um, trees have been coming down and they are not being replaced. So I just, if somebody in your ward says they want a tree removed, um, you can refer to that ordinance and it tells you what, how that goes. You don't just write out a work order. Um, you can get the advice of the tree advisory board or any member of the tree stewards and we can talk about some mitigation solutions to removing a, a healthy tree. Um, of course, diseased or broken trees, they, they need to come down. Um, any questions about that? Has anybody looked at that ordinance and questions about it? Okay. Um, I'm available anytime if anybody wants to call me, if they've got any other questions. Um, John knows how to reach me. Um, yes? I just have one comment. And, um, placement of trees, the infrastructure, a lot of times, is not looked at or thought about when the tree is initially grown. Half the time, it integrates sewer lines, underground water lines, and all kinds of things. I think what we need to do is look at a placement. I know that I know the tree advisory board is looking because I sat on the tree advisory board for a few years and know that and I spoke one time saying that something that you know, okay, this looks like a good spot to be there. Well the tree that was removed years ago they planted snow up was removed for a reason. The reason was that the day when they planted them nobody knew that stuff existed. I don't think anybody really wants to cut a tree down, but it's going to cost them thousands of dollars because the homeowner is responsible um, to shut off whatever that may be from the sewer that goes to the home. That costs a lot of money. So that's, that's an issue that you know, we have to look at and have to be very conscious of very easily. Right. Especially we're going to spend the time money to do by the city. It has to be well thought out. Yeah, well, before any trees are planted, the tree stewards don't typically plant the trees. The GPW does. And, of course, they would be looking at I, I what's under there. I followed them around a little bit, and we, we did end up moving some because of there's the water box, there's the sewer lateral marked out, you know, proximity. Mm -hmm. Trees sometimes grow just as big on the ground as they grow above ground. So oh, yeah. That's okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and I just I wanted to remind everybody of Arbor Day, and I'm not pointing at you, Kevin, I'm pointing at the flag behind you, <laughs> that uh, Oswego is a Tree City USA, and that's a, a proud honor to be um, earned. Uh, so Arbor Day in New York State is April 27th, it's Friday, and we will be having our celebration at Oak Hill Park, and we'll be planting a ceremonial tree and we'll also be doing a little workshop and education. So hope to see you all there. Thank you. Right? Right? Um, would anyone else like to speak during public session? Uh, see none, I will close public session. We will start the regular meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, please call the roll. His Honor the Mayor. Here. Councilor McBrady. Here. Councilor DeMassey. Here. Councilor Hill. Here. Councilor Wilmot. Here. Councilor Gosick. Here. Councilor Tesferio. Here. Councilor Cordino. Here. All present. Thank you. I just have uh, one point to make under the 
mayor's report. Uh, last Monday, we lost a uh, former longtime city employee to the city of Oswego, Ann Smigelski. Uh, she was 80 years old. She uh, worked for the city of Oswego for uh, just over 40 years. In the city clerk's office, uh, she served in just about every position in the office at one time or another and eventually was a deputy city clerk uh, starting in uh, 1989. She actually retired at the end of September in 1999. So I'd like to offer our condolences to her family and friends and uh, a moment of silence. Councilors have anything to add under the mayor's report? Seeing none, court please call resolution 79. Approved minutes, Common Council meeting held February 26, 2018. Councilor Wilmot, Councilor Tessarario. Any comments? Court please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tessarario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 80. Approve use of public space. Stephanie Lamb, Associate Alumni Director, SUNY Oswego, to hold an alumni event at Breitbeck Park on Saturday, June 9, 2018. Councilor Hill. Councilor Cordino. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 81. Approve use of public space, Mallory Rule for a wedding ceremony in Breitbeck Park on Saturday, June 23, 2018. Councilor DeMassey. Councilor Hill. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 82. Approve use of public space, Oswego Health for property located adjacent to 29 East Cayuga Street. Councilor Massey, Councilor Wilmot. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Resolution number 83. Approve use of public space, Oswego Little League, in order to host the third annual Oswego Little League 5K Run Walk event to be held Friday, June 1st, 2018. Councillor Gosick, Councillor Hill. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution <laughs> passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 84. Approve use of city properties by Thomas Allen in order to host the 7th annual Atomic in Invitational Fishing Derby to be held August 10th through 12th, 2018. Councilor Cordino, Councilor Tessereri. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tessereri. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Clerk, please call resolution number 85. Grant permission to the Oswego YMCA to host the Dragon Boat Festival to be held August 10th through 11th, 2018. Councilor McBrady. Councilor Gosick. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tessario. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Call resolution number 86. Approve use of Breitbeck Park by the Oswego City County Youth Bureau in order to host an Easter egg hunt on Saturday, March 31st, 2018. Councilor McBrady, Councilor Gosick. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 87. Approves, approve proposed local law number one of the year 2018, a local law amending chapter 211, streets and sidewalks. Councilor Hill, Councilor DeMassey. Uh, this is proposed law that amends.
amendment to proposed law uh, number one of the year 2018. Uh, this law involves uh, clearing the sidewalk, uh, shoveling your snow and clearing your sidewalk. Uh, first, this isn't a new law. I want to make that clear. Uh, this law is actually already on the books. We're simply amending the law. Uh, and the two changes uh, we are making involve moving the time, which is now 7 p.m., to 7 a.m. the next day. That's one change. The second change uh, is implementing the fine amount uh, in addition to the surcharge. And the idea here is uh, to be more proactive in our code enforcement measures, uh, which is actually coincides with what uh, our speaker said, is more enforcement I believe implementing this fine will actually automatically be a more proactive uh, code enforcement measure because once a property owner is uh, fined for uh, not complying with the code uh, and clearing their sidewalks in a timely manner, they're less apt to uh, repeat that same violation uh, in the immediate future. So the way the system works now is uh, the property is noted for being out of uh, they uh, legally have to be put on notice, so a letter is mailed uh, that the uh, violation is documented. Uh, a letter is mailed that day. Obviously, the letter can take uh, two to three days to arrive. When they receive the letter, they have um, the 24 hours to, the letter gives them 24 hours. So, uh, you actually have, not until have instead of 7 p.m. the day it stops snowing, you have until 7 a.m. and you still have the days in which it takes you to get the letter in addition to another 24 hours to clear your sidewalk. Which goes into my next point. And the next point is uh, this law is actually designed to uh, be more proactive but target the consistently problematic and negligent property owners who time and time again can't clean, can't uh, seem to clear their sidewalks in a timely, reasonable fashion. Uh, and the, uh, that narrative actually complements the numbers. If you look at the January code report, you'll see that half of the violations uh, in the report are from the uh, non-compliant properties that can't clear their sidewalks. And you'll see the majority of those uh, properties are bank-owned, LLC, commercial properties, rental properties, um, and they are the properties that seem to be consistently problematic over and over and over again. Uh, so my point is if you're an owner-occupied resident, if you're not receiving non-compliance letters now, uh, then your property probably isn't the problematic property we're talking about, uh, because you'd still be getting the letters now you weren't shoveling. Uh, so really the only change is the change in time, which I think actually gives property owners more time, more reasonable time, uh, and implementing that fine structure. Uh, the way it works now, I ended up going off track. The, uh, if you can't meet the deadline, those multiple days you're given for one reason or another, uh, I mean, I think everybody can agree, nobody should have to walk in the road. That like, shouldn't be acceptable. It, it just isn't acceptable. Watching, a, uh, I live near Kingsford Park and watch uh, school children walk in the road uh, on Erie Street, which is a busy, fast street, and it's just not acceptable. Um, you know, we have an obligation to uh, clean your sidewalk in a reasonable amount of time. So I don't, you know, uh, I just, it's just not acceptable to let people walk the street. But anyway, uh, if the amount of time passes and you can't seem to come into compliance, the way it works now is uh, the city will uh, clear the sidewalk or hire a contractor to clear the sidewalk. Uh, you are administered a surcharge based on the value of work. So if the value of work, uh, for example, is between $1 and $99, uh, you pay that and a surcharge. If it's $100 to $199, the value of work, you pay a $150 surcharge and it continues to increase based on the value of work. 
uh, with this law, the amendment uh, brings in the fine amount. So in addition to the value of work and the surcharge, we're implementing the fine amount, which uh, increases exponentially based on the number of violations the property receives. So if you never received a violation before, the first time it's a $75 fine. Uh, if you've received a violation previously, and uh, now it's a $150 fine, and it continues to go up with every previous violations up to three and above. Uh, so that speaks to making it proactive, and that speaks to trying to stop the behavior from happening to begin with. The uh, issues that I talked about for sidewalks and uh, clearing snow applies for the next local law we'll be voting on, uh, the more nuisance violations that I talk about, tall grass, junk in the yard, exposed trash, indoor furniture on an exterior porch. It's just not really acceptable. And it really shouldn't be who we are as a community. We should actually try to send a different message than that. Uh, and again, this law, I believe, will make that more proactive because just as uh, similar to the clearing of snow, we find that the same properties always have uh, junk on the front porch. They have trash out front. The grass is already tall. The problem is, once the snow is covering the sidewalk, and once the grass is already tall, the damage is done. Uh, people have already gone by and, and noticed the properties not being kept. Uh, children have already walked in the road. Elderly and disabled have already walked in the road. So the damage is done. Uh, so we have to try something different to get out in front of it, to be proactive, and to punish those who consistently violate. We're not after the person uh, who was away for three days and couldn't shovel their sidewalk the one time in January. It's just not, we don't have the time, energy, and resources to focus on those types of violations. We, we need to make a priority of a consistent repeat. Second part, uh, lack of enforcement. Well, uh, we actually, we make, how we enforce now is we have a complaint investigator who handles the uh, clearing of sidewalks and tall grass. And they divide the city into quadrants and control on any given day. Uh, that position is being made full time, so they'll be out on the street more. We've uh, added code enforcers since we took office in 2016. Uh, we will now, in short order, have three, uh, two and a half code enforcers in addition to the complaint investigator. Uh, so we're, we're beefing up enforcement. We are, a, a lot of times, it is a complaint-driven office. Um, we tend to focus around, at least with clearing the snow, around schools, because uh, that's where children are walking. Uh, major thoroughfares, Bridge Street, uh, that's a focus. So uh, enforcement now, there's more enforcement now than there really has ever been. Uh, and I think, truly think that we're cleaning up the city, trying to make uh, raise the bar for property owners. And we really should not make it acceptable for children to walk in the street. This is my first winter as mayor where we've had significant snowfall. Uh, so it really wasn't a problem that uh, we, we had to acknowledge the first two winters. Uh, this winter, with, with significant snowstorms, it was a problem. I saw it firsthand. I'm sure some of the counselors saw it firsthand. You can see it on social media of parents who are outraged or children have to walk in the street, and rightfully so. And I don't think that's right or acceptable. So, uh, last part, one speaker mentioned the zoning rewrite. Uh, we actually do have a committee. Who, somebody outside's writing it. Well, it's a law firm writing it. It's not really a consultant. The committee tells the law firm how to, what we want to accomplish in our rewrite, what we hope the zoning code rewrite and update accomplishes what we would like to see, what sort of development we would like to see where. The committee tells them that. The committee, I think, is made up of eight to ten people. Uh, all who live in the city serve on the plan for its own board, and the city administration, members of the ORA. Uh, and the uh, firm puts it into language that uh, fits in the zone. So just a little clarification and correction. Uh, all I have to add here. Just make sure. If any of the counselors have anything they'd like to add. Counselor Gozer. Yeah, I'm going to say, um, with all due respect, a couple weeks ago I had mentioned that I had received calls from elderly 
um, constituents of mine um, were concerned about, um, again, the stress put on them <coughs> physically, um, you know, economically, if they were fine. Um, and I'd received a couple other calls, and uh, one constituent asked me to speak. I said I was going to uh, go against this, even though I do appreciate um, you know, the spirit of the law, and I think the intention is good. And that's actually what the constituent was all about. And then, uh, the wife called me up and said, uh, I could mention one last thing. Uh, would be that they think the intention is good, but it's not realistic um, as far as enforcement is concerned. <coughs> and I guess the big thing they thought was, you know, if safety is the issue, especially around schools, um, crosswalks, maybe we ought to take a step back and look at it a little more. And uh, suggested that we might even look into a study done to look, or the, so that would it be more cost effective if the city actually take care of those few crosswalks near the schools, um, to make sure that it was going to be cleared, rather than, you know, wait, and I thought, the least I could do would be to mention that tonight, but again, the arguments I made last time was just perception to some people is, you know, you get that letter, and um, a lot of older people feel, even though I know you've explained it very well, the perception is out there that a lot of people feel that they're going to be targeted, and um, I think it would cause some distress on a lot of them, and the least I could do would be to it. And the fact, not that going back 50 years is any indication of what's going on today, and I understand the mayor makes great points about the safety of the kids out there. I just thought I'd throw that out there. I'm going to vote against this, but uh, I don't know if someone can chime in. I just wanted to make sure you know, that I do um, understand the safety issues and it's not a priority. But I do see it tonight. This is a pretty good thing. We've heard again and again um, from them. And obviously, that's one of the big things I'm sure they received many complaints from all over the city from different wards, from schools. Um, we've got to do a lot more. But Kingsford uh, community there um, has done everything they could. You know, they, they've tried to address it. I think that um, this could be something rather than saying, well, you didn't do it, and the sidewalk isn't cleared. Um, if, if we looked at what would it cost them the city to do this, just around the schools and those areas, you know, and we have the laws on the book. So um, I wanted to make that argument, but I do appreciate the spirit of the law, and I, uh, but I am respectfully um, voting against it. Mr. Cordino.
three or three feet wide and most deep. And touch in some cases, and he would, he would reach out the side window and touch the other house. That's how close our neighbors were. And what I'm proposing here, I know it's going to be pretty radical. I've had a couple of radical I just want to um, kind of add to that, add to what the mayor said. Um, you know, we, we talk about children and we use um, kind of children to illustrate the points that we're trying to make. And it's no more evident than what happens on Bridge Street in front of where I live and where we conduct business when, you know, and it's not the elderly folks who, who are not maintaining their property. It's the landlords. It's the... Um, the absentee landlords, it's people who just don't care about the city, they don't care about their property, and they're the ones who just repeatedly will not take care of the snow, will not take care of their property, and when you watch a 9 or 10 year old have to cross out into Bridge Street with ice covered roads, traffic moving rapidly, and you're, and you're watching it happen, I mean it, is, it makes your heart almost stop. And it should not happen in the city, it shouldn't happen anywhere. Um, I mean, this is it's a no-brainer. Anything we can do to try to, uh, you know, the carrot and the stick. This is the stick. We have to get people to, uh, to react. I don't think we should be legislating based on perception. Uh, we should be legislating based on reality. Um, this is reality. This is reality for me. This is reality in other wards. Um, it, it just makes sense. Uh, this law is already in the books. If these homeowners aren't having problems now, why would they have problems after these additional uh, penalties are imposed? It's just not going to happen. Um, and as far as code enforcement goes, uh, we are putting money into the office. We're supporting, I assume, um, an additional code enforcer so that'll help us to be more proactive. Uh, so I think we're moving in the right direction. We can't just dump you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into the office, though we should point out that that is one of the only, if not the only city office it actually generates enough money to cover its expenses. So it's somewhere we could look to invest more, but I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, I've seen this firsthand this winter, especially uh, last winter and the winter before, it just wasn't the same. Uh, but this year it was just, it was disturbing, uh, to say the least. So I'm, I'm on board with this one. Any other comments uh,
Go, no. Actually, I'm sorry. I, I do want to uh, clarify two things. Uh, number one, as has been pointed out, uh, there is no new legislation being proposed here. This is a recodification of existing laws. And to be clear, uh, in case anyone questions this, <coughs> Chapter uh, 211, Article 1, is entitled Snow and Ice Removal. Under, uh, in effect, Section 1 of that article, uh, it's blank. It's reserved. Section 2 deals with penalties. And the penalty for not removing snow from your sidewalk is a maximum of $5. Okay. It's been on the books since at least 1980. Uh, this uh, law just addresses the, the issue and frankly puts a little bit more teeth into enforcement. Uh, and where did we get that law from? Uh, we got it from two, chapter 249-9. So we've simply moved that provision from chapter 249 and placed it in its rightful position in chapter 211. All right. So this is an effort just to kind of clean up the code, uh, not adding to it, um, certainly creating more teeth in terms of enforcement, uh, but this is just a, a, an effort to make the laws a little bit more uh, readable and user-friendly. Thank you. I should also add that this discussion came out of the zoning code rewrite, where I repeatedly expressed my uh, frustration with not being able to get in front of these problems. So it was with that uh, group meeting, the committee meeting, the zoning code rewrite, where uh, this issue just kept coming up, and uh, this discussion actually branched off of that rewrite, and we handled it through this uh, Any other comments? Seeing none, will clerk please call the roll? Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor McBrady? Yes. Councilor DeMassey? Yes. Councilor Hill? Yes. Councilor Wilmot? Yes. Councilor Gosick? No. Councilor Tesferio? Yes. Resolution passes 6-1. Please call resolution number 88. Approve proposed local law number two of the year 2018, a local law amending chapter 249, vacant and occupied property maintenance. Councillor Hill, Councillor Cordino. Same, same concept. Uh, instead of talking about clearing snow from sidewalks, we're talking about tall grass, garbage, junk in the front lawn, indoor furniture, and exterior porches, etc. Any council? Uh, comments from the council? Seeing none. Councilor McBurdy? Oh, no. Oh, no penalties. Uh, seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor McBurdy? Yes. Councilor DeMassey? Yes. Councilor Hill? Yes. Councilor Wilmot? Yes. Councilor Gosick? Yes. Councilor Tesserio? Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 89. Authorize public hearing regarding proposed local law number three of the year 2018, a local law amending local law number three of the year 2015, Chapter 224, taxation, with respect to exemption for certain capital improvements to residential buildings. Councillor Cordino, Councillor Gosick, uh, this is to renew a law uh, that needs to be renewed. It's already on the books. It is the residential home improvement tax exemption. Uh, what this law does, uh, when I talk to homeowners, uh, one of the common uh, complaints that I receive is the fact that if they uh, improve their home or invest in their property uh, with a renovation or uh, just make a basic improvement to the property, uh, there is a little reluctance to do that because uh, usually just in results in increase in assessment, which obviously uh, creates an increase in the amount of property tax that you pay. What this law does, uh, it's supposed to serve as a way to encourage uh, home improvement uh, projects and prevent that immediate tax hike from happening, is it exempts uh, the, value, the value of the home improvement project from uh, your taxes. So. Uh, now what will happen is uh, if you make a home improvement uh, uh, and you apply for uh, this exemption up in the assessor's office or the code enforcement office, you will complete the project and the uh, assessor will reassess your home as 
he or she naturally would, uh, but there would be uh, this exemption uh, would make it so that that uh, difference in assessment or the value, I should say, of the uh, property is not fully taxed for eight years. The exemption the first year is a 100% exemption, uh, and then it goes down incrementally, incrementally for eight years uh, until it is eventually fully taxed, but it does save you uh, money over that time frame. Uh, fees for renewed every three years, that's uh, what we are doing this evening. The improvement project uh, must exceed $3,000, must be for a residential house, uh, and the next resolution, I'll speak to that in a second, but it is essentially the same thing, but for businesses. One point I do want to <coughs> make sure that I make is uh, the city is renewing this legislation. We are making it permanent. So it does not need to be renewed. Uh, I think it'll be harder uh, when I'm not here anymore and this council isn't here anymore. It'll be harder for some politician to walk in and say, uh, let's just not quietly not renew it, and then it expires and everybody forgets it ever existed. It'll be a little harder for somebody uh, six years from now when I'm not here to try to repeal the law. Uh, so that's what I hope that will accomplish. I'll also take the, mo the moment to ask the county legislature. Uh, they adopted this residential tax exemption. They are in the process of renewing it. I would encourage them to uh, insert a provision making it permanent so it doesn't need to be renewed. Uh, that way the county ledge uh, 10, 15 years from now would have to repeal it rather than <coughs> quietly letting it go away. I would also ask the Oswego City School District. Uh, they can actually pass this exemption. There's really no reason to not pass the exemption. Uh, what they should do is pass the exemption because with the county on board, the city on board, and the school district, you now have the three taxing entities in the city all on the same page offering the same exemption, which makes the amount of money you can save on all three tax bills uh, larger, which makes the exemption program itself more meaningful and more enticing. Uh, I think the county and city both have been a bit disappointed in the lack of use of this exemption in the first three years. We had a uh, POM card made up here in the city a couple of months ago that we distributed to the ORA. We have it uh, laying around the city hall. <coughs> we give it to the Chamber of Commerce uh, and the uh, real estate agents in the city. And we're trying to promote it, uh, but I do think that if all three entities got on board, the savings would be much more meaningful and enticing. And I would urge the county to make it permanent, urge the school district to pass it. Comments from the council. None? Please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tusserio. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 9. Authorized public hearing regarding proposed local law number 4 of the year 2018. A local law amending Chapter 224, Taxation of the Code of the City of Oswego, New York, with respect to taxation and implementing a business investment exception. Councillor Hill, Councillor Gose. Uh, I should clarify because I don't think I did it in the last resolution. We are uh, authorizing the public hearing, so the public hearing will be two weeks from tonight where the vote on both of these exemptions will take place. Uh, this local law currently not on the books. It essentially is the same thing uh, as the residential tax exemption, only this applies to businesses. Format's a little different. The uh, minimum uh, amount for businesses is $10,000, a $10,000 investment, and the structure of the exemption is a bit different. The residential's over eight years, starting at 100% going to zero. The business tax exemption is over 10 years, starting at 50% exempt, working its way down 5% a year for 10 years until it's at zero. So really the only two that are Any comments from the council? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tessario. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Clerk, please call resolution number 91. Approve amusement license for the 2018 racing events at the Oswego Speedway. 
Councillor Ariel, Councillor Gozer. Comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 92. Authorize Mayor to sign change order number one with the WCA Roofing and Sheet Metal Company Incorporated. Councillor McBrady, Councillor Cordino. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserio. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution number 93. Authorize Mayor to enter into, into an, a renewal agreement with Step 1 Creative for website maintenance. Councillor Gosick. Councillor DeMassey. Well, I just wanted to say, um, the mayor came into office uh, two and a half years ago. <coughs> thing but you know, look at a swigo and the image of a swigo the website's such a useful tool to go there you get you know, forms people need for every you know, anything you need um, saves a lot of time you get on there just to see the imagery the pictures are phenomenal it's the way it should be presented i think it's a very reasonable cost and uh, um, i think it's done a, it's the first step in this revitalization and um, you know, repackaging Try to think of the perfect word, but uh, you know, we look at a swing of what we're trying to do is revitalization, perhaps. Um, a little thing like this, but I think it's a really worthwhile investment. Um, it's definitely made a thing that can impression people through the first impression. Um, I just commend step one for the great job they did. The information that's been, been made available to the public and the way it's presented is very professional, um, you know, world class website. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there. I think it was um, it's often overlooked, but it's a little thing, but it's very important. have an organization or an event, uh, some sort of community event, feel free to shoot it over to uh, the Economic Development Office or my office or uh, City Councilor and we can always post uh, information, uh, <coughs> post something to the website, especially on our community event. Any other comments? Yes. And that's exactly where we would be promoting for this, for people to take advantage of it. Something flashing. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tessereo. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution number 94. Authorize Mayor to execute an agreement with Camden Group for consulting and staff support services at the water treatment plant. Councilor Cordino. Councilor McBrady. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserario. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution number 95. Authorize purchasing agent to seek bids for the 2018 paving project. Councillor Hill. Councillor Gosick. The paving, proposed paging project is approximately $827,000. Covers uh, Ontario Street from West Seneca Street to West Schuyler Street. Lathrop Street from West Oneida Street to State Route 104, Murray Street from Munn Street to West First, East Seneca Street from George Street to City Line, George Street from 104 to East Seneca, East Albany Street from Chestnut to Champaign, Washington Boulevard from 3rd to Draper, and Liberty Street from Cayuga to Lake Street. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserio. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution number 96. Approve transfer of funds from the snow removal account to the garage equipment account. Councillor Tesserario. Councillor DeMassey. We talked about this last week at committee. Over the last uh, two, two and a half winters, uh, between implementing the brine solution, between implementing what they call the Dickey John system with our snow plows, where we can better control uh, the amount of uh, salt 
that we laid out on the road before. It used to just spill out the back. It didn't matter what the conditions were, how serious the storm was. Uh, they would just let the salt pour out of the back. Now we uh, closely monitor it and alter it based on conditions and what the conditions call for. Uh, and the fact that we've been lucky enough to have really two uh, mild winters, we've managed to save approximately $300,000 off of our salt bill. Uh, what we asked for from the council was to transfer that money purchase a piece of equipment. That piece of equipment is, is a, I guess you could call it a pothole, a road patching truck. Uh, it's a truck that actually goes through the streets and has an arm that comes out over the front. And rather than having uh, one person driving the, the pickup truck and two people behind the truck shoveling cold patch into a pothole, this truck takes one person driving and go up, uh, up and down city streets much quicker, just uh, really shooting this material much quicker and create much better road conditions and probably save us from uh, getting so many notice claims that we had from Pablo. Uh, the good news, we transferred uh, up to, not to exceed $300,000. Uh, we found a uh, truck, uh, it's used, it's a 2009 truck with 17,000 miles uh, for approximately 114000 Are in the, with that truck, we are going to uh, purchase uh, the, there's a chute that arm shoots in uh, gravel and the material into the pothole, which patches the hole. I guess that that arm is worn out because gravel shoots through it and the material shoots through it. So we're just going to uh, purchase two additional uh, chutes, I guess, so when they get worn out, we already have them uh, on stock. I guess that those two shoots, I guess, are about 2,600 bucks. Uh, so, are we also going to purchase the um, hot asphalt? Yes, that's included in the. Yeah. Yep. So that's included in the Yep. Uh, and we estimated a new truck would be about two. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tessereo. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Please call resolution number 97. Approve attendance at the 2018 New York State Building Officials Conference to be held April 10th through 12th, 2018 in Liverpool, New York. Request of Randall B. Griffin, Fire Chief. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tessereo. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Please call resolution number 98. Approve attendance at the Career Fire Chiefs of New York State Workshop to be held March 20th and 21st, 2018 in Saratoga Springs, New York. Request of Randall B. Griffin, Fire Chief. Councilor McBrady, Councilor Cordino. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McBrady. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tusferio. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution number 99. Approve attendance at the ag aggressive dog handling workshop to be held June 3rd and 4th, 2018 in Syracuse, New York. 
Request of Carolyn, Caroline Anderson, Animal Control Officer. Councilor Casarario, Councilor Hill. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor McFrarity. Yes. Councilor DeMassey. Yes. Councilor Hill. Yes. Councilor Wilmot. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Tesserio. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Uh, we do have uh, one add-on. Uh, send our director for rental assistance to uh, training. Uh, cost is uh, $2,900. Uh, he was actually in training this last week, which is uh, why I'm letting him uh, submit this agenda item on the agenda uh, and it's for training from May 6th to, through uh, May 11th uh, so we can continue the uh, uh, HUD training that he needs. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. We need a first and a second. Oh, okay. I'm a little ahead of myself. Councillor Cordino, Councillor Hill. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserio. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 101. Approve attendance at the Housing Choice Specialist Training to be held May 6 through 11, 2018, in Jacksonville, Florida. Request of Nathan Emmons, Director of Rental Assistance. Councillor McBrady, Councillor Hill. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserio. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Make a motion to adjourn. Councillor Tesserio, Councillor Cordino. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor McBrady. Yes. Councillor DeMassey. Yes. Councillor Hill. Yes. Councillor Wilmot. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Tesserio. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Meeting is adjourned.